Um, well, it's, its intent is for uh, virtualized computing. Okay. High-speed virtualized computing and gives you everything that you need in one box to accomplish that. So, Brett Kelly, here we are back once again. Yep. After a little set change. And uh, tell us about this baby. This is this is our, our VM series, our, our Proxinator. And what this is, is it's designed for, um, well, it's, its intent is for uh, virtualized computing. Okay. High speed virtualized computing and gives you everything that you need in one box to accomplish that. So, yeah, virtual computing, I think of virtual computing and I go, mature. Very mature. It's just about the motherboard and CPU number of CPUs and GPU comes yeah. up in some way. Well said. We get so excited yeah. and it's all yeah. but you're you're well said. Very it's commodity. Yes. And and, and, and the, cho the change of that market mm -hmm. is about, you know, really the, you know, the, the whole larger market, not this machine. We're moving ahead, but that market is really about the VMware upheaval and Absolutely. proprietary software yeah. and, and, and that risk you run when somebody owns your future, right? Yeah, the rug pull. And you got her the rug pull and it, it, it sucks being owned. Uh, that's why people love to come to open source. It's what we do. A little plug for us is we make open source easy and virtual compute. So, but that performance wall, it, it's all about the motherboard, price performance wall, yep. nothing happening in it. Uh, you know, of node incremental improvement. But there's a bottleneck in virtual computing, isn't yeah. it? Where's that bottleneck? And uh, there's something that we do well. <laughs> well, you set me up well, but it's the thing people often think about last with all this stuff. I got all my cores, all my RAM and everything like that. Okay, what are you using for your storage? If your storage is not fast enough to keep up with you trying to do, or well architected to keep up with you trying to do, then it doesn't matter how awesome your front end is. Yeah, and, and let's take that just so, you know, thinking about that, as Brett says, everybody overlooks that, but, you know, just to get a grip on that, your desktop PC, mm -hmm. put a spinner in it and try to get all those small files to boot. It just takes you forever. Into every, yeah. Yeah, VMs, when you're, but whether you're booting them or restoring them snapshots or just operating the things, it's just, if, if you're into conventional paste storage, then you're, you're just bottlenecking up your whole compute system, right? Yeah, exactly. And where you're going to spin a bunch of... That's the whole point of virtual computing. You have hundreds to thousands of, of uh, machines running on this one virtual thing. They're all going to be hitting your storage. So wouldn't it be great if you could have NVMe storage, SAS storage, directly in your parallel, PC, paralleled into your into your PCI, PCI Un bus, unbottlenecked, unbottlenecked, Un exactly. Yep. And and that magic that we got as we talked about in our F sixteen machine, customer says. Microsoft Enterprise software that he was using reported, you know, can't be, got to be an error yeah. so fast. Yeah, exactly. So parallel uh, NVMe storage and virtual computing are uh, peanut butter and jelly. I like that. Yeah. Or, or peanut butter and chocolate. Peanut butter and chocolate. Pick your, you take your pick, right? Tomato, tomato, tomato. So this, so this guy, we have, we got eight flash drives. Yeah, so great. So this model right here, we have eight slots for the flash drives in this one. Uh, there's another model for it right here. You can see this kind of blank strip right here. We can go up to 16. And then um, there's another model of this coming that can accommodate thicker drives as well, too. So we've got options as well. Yep. Uh, what do you have sitting here? Uh, this is a NVIDIA L40, but it's a full-size GPU. So what the chamber is for this side is for is for um, uh, vGPU, like virtualized GPU enabling. Um, sorry, I said that horribly. GPUs that support the, um, the virtualization. Yeah. So things like the same way that you would virtualize the CPU and share it with a bunch of machines. You can do that with um, with these. So that's the idea of this. You get uh, memory, compute, fast storage, fast GPU all in one box. Yeah. And, and the GPU is an option. Uh, the, oh, of sell, course it's an We option. sell lots of yeah. these without GPUs. Yeah. Uh, really common use without GPUs. But yeah, really under open source, Nobody owns your future. You can have all of this stuff and, uh, and, and just a super low performance. Exactly. And, and to that point, too, is back to the GPU, it has been sized in this way, uh, thermally and mechanically, that you can put any full-size GPU in there because it's a wild, wild west of a world there. It is so. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and uh, these things, we also have people using them for standalone AI. Standalone AI, yeah. We've got quite yeah. a few customers who came in and are enabling them, enabling their... Well, various different things. I wish I could talk about them all, but it's pretty cool what they're getting done. Yeah, we have one really, really large customer using these who's uh, we're NDA'd with, but yeah. uh, but but that's all good. Um, yeah, so uh, you know, again, been remiss. We created these machines. Yep. Forty-five drives labs, 
and uh, and we've never really taken it out and shared, you know, what it's like to run VMs mm -hmm. rather than being bottlenecked off all other storage. Like, look, even the architecture in this, we have this highly parallel NVMe bank unobstructed to your PCI bus. Correct. It goes right into your compute rather than the other option is storage through network. Yeah, the traditional sand block storage where it's just yep. some spinning array somewhere else and you don't know. So yeah, yeah, spinning array and you, you, this is just, I mean, number one, moving to NVMe and number two, uh, you know, PCI bus connected. So anyway, we talked about this. I can't wait till our video series progresses. We're gonna get down and we're gonna show you guys virtual computing. Uh, restore from snapshot, snapshot, uh, uh, and uh, and and boot and yep. and migration migration else. of VMs. That's the one that yeah. burns people a lot. Where it's like, oh, I flip some VMs around, but they're small. We we've had some customers who are like, yeah, there's like two terabytes on this disk because it's our centralized everything. Well, we got to migrate. Well, that's going to take me three weeks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, something like this. Right? Two terabytes moving around in this is no big deal. Yeah. So if you're yeah. going to migrate it to another server, yeah, cluster. There's yeah. you got options because that's the other thing we have talked about. This is a single server, but like. You build this up with Proxmox and then co-locate a Ceph cluster as well too. You get that best of both worlds of yeah. HA and really fast bus speed. It's yeah. it's really cool. Yeah. Really, really cool. Yeah, so uh, yeah. just summarize what's going on. The enterprise track is all about performance. In fact, the specific, again, the specific question is the software bottlenecks. We have these yeah. category machines, which are so superlative, but in, uh, in, in computing, you know, if you look back in the history of computing, but I'm an old guy and I, I, I lived it. Uh, and you know the Intel world. You know so many, so much of the world, has, computing has resided in that. Uh, along comes the 286, the 386, a coprocessor, the 486, etc. And 32-bit computing happened, and you know we're a decade later, and so many of our apps were still in 16-bit. Yeah. So software lags, and yes. so uh, really the question at Greater Summit for those interested is in key software. Uh, that relates to storage, virtual, everything else like that. Uh, ZFS clustering software and DRDB is going to yep. be there. Yep. And uh, we're going to have experts from the project, open source projects talking about software. The, the, the basis is these machines exist and uh, what's getting in the way and what has to happen till we squeeze every last drop out when, when is the software truly going to catch up and, 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 finish changing our world because the hardware alone changes it, right? Yeah. And, and you put that into existing software and it, it, it's just a dramatically different experience. Yeah. So, and then, uh, yeah, so we're going, so that's going to be go. it. And stay tuned for our video series, uh, piece at a time. And uh, we can't wait to share this out. I, I just can't believe we just built all this stuff and we oh, uh, so built it, sell it, yeah. deployed it. We have these things operating all over and people go, wow, we've never really showed the you know, hardcore, just the facts, Jack. Here's exactly what we did. Look at it go versus the old school. You got it. Yeah. Yeah. So let's go. I'm excited. Cool. That's it. Brett, drag strip. Drag strip. Yeah. Cool, man. Deadly. See you guys there.